river, this lake, this ocean of blood, all begins at the garden when Adam and Eve take that fruit and bite into it and disregard God's command and become shamed and sinful and broken and unrighteous and in need of covering. And God himself generously allows them to live. But someone's got to pay for that sin, don't they? Something's got to die. Someone's got to die. And what God does there is he physically covers the sin of Adam and Eve. But spiritually they are left broken. The animals of the sacrifices throughout history cover and conceal the physical aspects of sin. The physical effects of sin. But spiritually we are left with the sin on our spirits and on our souls. Until, until we get to this table here. When we come to this table and we come to Jesus, Jesus becomes the ultimate par excellence perfect sacrifice for all time. The once and for all time sacrifice for all sin. Not only covering the physical aspects of sin, not only uh, uh, hiding what sin does, but purifying and refining and cleansing internally the sin aspect of our souls. He becomes the, the this this supper represents the Passover supper, but the, the fulfillment of the Passover supper, right? Moses initiated the Passover supper so that Christ, when he came, all the images of freedom from Egypt, freedom from oppression, of slavery, freedom from sin would be fulfilled in what Christ does at this table. Jesus himself becomes the Passover lamb. The lamb who was slaughtered to forgive our sins. His blood initiates the new covenant, right? He says, this blood is the covenant which is poured out in my blood. This cup is the new covenant. And Moses used that term, this cup is the covenant, right? And Jesus says, this is the new covenant. He becomes the perfect sacrifice to end all sacrifices, fulfilling all the covenants of the Old Testament, all the blood covenants, the need for blood. And Jesus, as the second Adam, completes what the first Adam couldn't do. When the first Adam failed to obey God, the second Adam succeeds. And he obeys perfectly. And where the first Adam was spared death, the second Adam accepts death and takes death upon himself. And he experiences death so that we don't need to. And I want to read to you just from Hebrews chapter 9 where we find some of these ideas all tied together in Hebrews 9 verse 11 and following to 20, uh, 28. It says, when Christ came as high priest of the good things that are already here, he went through a greater and more perfect tabernacle or temple that is not man-made, that is to say, not part of his creation. He did not enter by the means of blood, the blood of goats and calves, but entered the most holy place once and for all by his own blood, having obtained eternal redemption. Jesus' blood is eternal. And complete. The blood of goats and bulls, and I already talked about all these systems, and ashes of the heifer sprinkle on those who are ceremonially unclean, sanctify them so that they are outwardly clean. Outwardly, not inwardly. Physically clean, not spiritually clean. How much more then will the blood of Christ, who, through the eternal Spirit, offered himself? Unblemished to God. All these sacrifices had to be without blemish. They had to be good animals, without flaws. But Jesus is the perfect sacrifice. He is unblemished to God. He cleanses our consciences, our insides, from the acts that lead to death, so that we may serve the living God. For this reason, Christ is the mediator of a new covenant, that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance now that he has died as a ransom to set them free from the sins committed under the first covenant, Moses'. And then it talks about how a will never comes into effect until a person dies, so with God's plan. He said, this is the blood of the covenant 
which God has commanded you to keep. This is the blood of the covenant, or trailing that blood. In the same way, he sprinkled the blood uh, with he sprinkled with the blood both the tabernacle, this is Moses, and everything used in the ceremony. In fact, the law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. Christ shed his blood so that we could have that forgiveness. Verse 23, we pick up that it's necessary then for the copies of the heavenly things to be purified. The copies of the heavenly things are the earthly things. This is a copy of what was done in heaven on our behalf. He says, it is necessary for the copies of heavenly things, the tabernacle, the, the decorations, the altars, the, it's the, they need to be purified with these sacrifices. But heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. And so Christ became the sacrifice which purifies this in our lives and in our hearts and in our souls. For Christ did not enter a man-made sanctuary that was only a copy of the true one. He entered heaven itself, now to appear for us in God's presence. Nor did he enter to offer himself again and again and again and again the way the high priest enters the most holy place every year with the blood that is not his own. Then Christ would have had to, to suffer many times since the creation of the world. But now he has appeared once and for all at the end of the ages to do away with sin by sacrificing himself. Just as man is destined to die once and after that to face judgment, so Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many people. He will appear a second time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. Christ died on the cross to fulfill every one of these different aspects of the need for blood. From Adam's need for blood, to Noah's, to uh, Abraham's, to, to Moses's, all the blood that was needed throughout history, all the sacrifice, Christ did it all at once. And he put a stopper in the drain of all this flowing blood throughout history. And he said, no more. My blood is the perfect blood that will stop this blood. And that flow is the blood that washes over us and cleanses us. As we partake this meal, we are celebrating that blood that Christ gave for us. And we are washed and made clean. And we are remade in His image. Let's pray that Jesus would that it. Oh, precious is the flow that makes us white as snow.